make sure you check out my website pcteach.me where you can look at all the videos in particular category orders also have the ability to contribute your own posts if you wish and I hope to see you there so this is going to be a relatively short chapter it's more to do with sort of the theory um, before we go into the actual um, cube dimension usage which is going to be the next video but it's a very important concept we need to get across which is um, the difference between what a star schema versus a snowflake schema is um, now it's probably just easier to show you so the next project file has been enhanced to actually elicit that information so um, I'm just going to open that up now. So we're going to look at the chapter 9 star versus snowflake and just open it up. Um, this is pretty much the same apart from um, a, a couple of key differences is I've actually enhanced um, some of the dimensions I've also added another area called sales territory um, which we're going to be using a bit later on um, but fundamentally what's happened is the data source view has had additional tables added to it so we're going to open this up and actually have a look because this is how we're going to work out the difference between star and snowflake so what we've got here is what we've been playing around with um, so far on, on these um, videos which is the internet sales um, so there's our facts table in the middle and then these are our dimension um, tables potentially over to the side so we've got promotion currency date that we we've come to know and love um, our customer information uh, products and sales territories which is the the new dimension I've put in but fundamentally everything sort of spawns from the central table which is um, the fact table so a typical snowflake um, sorry a typical star schema would look along the lines of this however what is a snowflake well a snowflake is a series of star schemas which are joined together at the hip and the general um, terminology really of, of actually defining a snowflake is where um, a dimension is used on one or more fact tables or a dimension is used with another dimension to get to another fact table right so let's just actually have a look at this now there are there are actually two ways of looking at this information um, let's have a look at the reseller schema so the reseller schema is somewhat similar to the internet sales so I'll be a little bit more complicated in this case we've got the employee dimension but um, we've got our factory sellers table and sales territory hang on did we not just see that one over here in Internet Cells? Yes, we did. So, okay, we've got a dimension that's actually been used on multiple fact tables. I think the one that we can probably easily identify is the product table. So the product table, whether you sell it um, on your website, your internet sales, or resell it to another bicycle shop, ultimately that same product is going to be used on both of these fact tables. So this is actually joining two fact tables together. So what I've done is in the last organizer is just sort of fleshing that out. So there's our fact reseller sales and there's our fact internet sales. And then in between we have got say two prized examples of where we've got a date dimension which is being used on both which is extremely common um, but what's more um, pertinent to both fact tables is the product table the, the product dimension is being used on both sides so in all sense purposes you could actually look at them individually and just say well that's a star schema um, internet sales that's a star schema however when you actually look at the bigger picture you actually have multiple fact tables looking at different um, dimensions or the same dimension and if you do have the same dimension then you are going down the route of snowflakes now a very important terminology in Microsoft is known as the UDM um, the unified data model this is one of the things that analysis services boasted back in 2005 um, because it was light years ahead of any other cubed um, facility out there what you can do with cubes in Microsoft is you can actually join multiple different fact tables together inside one cube but they could be all at different levels of granularity they could actually have different dimension structures and so forth so with my factory seller sales and my internet sales I could in terms of purposes do a new cube and I'll, I'll just do this now um, use existing tables yes and I'm just going to say suggest so it's going to pick up all these different tables as fact tables um, for our measure groups I'm just going to say next in fact I'm just going to go 
completely crazy and just let them all be added in. I'm not going to get these new dimensions added. Um, oh, actually, I will because otherwise it's a little error. Um, I'll just call this a test because I'm not really interested in keeping it. Um, but what we'll find now is, oh, blimey, look at this. Our cube structure, all these different fact tables and dimension tables coming in. But what's going on is it's actually now joining these different fact tables together. And where you see commonality across is your snowflake, really. So customer dimension appears to be in the internet sales, the survey response, the internet sales reason. Um, the fact reseller, no, it's not there, and the reseller is not there. But you can see now, and this is why it's known as a UDM, a unified data model, is that you may have commonality of a dimension across different types of data, um, but they may not be directly related with each other. They could be different sides of the spectrum. Um, I may have a customer on internet sales, um, but then eventually another uh, measure group comes in later on, which you would have no reason to actually join them together. But there is a certain level of granularity where there is commonality that you can join them together. Um, another example would be what if one of your measure groups would be, um, say, quarterly or yearly figures inside it. That's all you get out of it. Um, the date dimension is applicable, but not at the level of an individual date, which is what we've been using so far, the date key. But you could very reasonably say, well, the date dimension is used but only at the quarter level or the semester level or the yearly level and so you can get these date dimensions or any kind of dimension to work across multiple measure groups um, by different cardinality or different level of granularity is, is probably the better way of saying it. Um, so it is actually immense what you can do in this one screen. Now what we've got to do in the next video is actually understand what all these different icons mean um, so we've got here is a relationship to fact, a relationship of referenced. There's all sorts of different ones inside here. So what we'll be doing on the next video is actually going through this and explaining step by step what the differences are. But to understand these, you must have a firm understanding of what we've just talked about, which is the difference between a snowflake and a star schema, because that is fundamentally what's being talked about when we deal with the relationship aspects between dimension and measure group. So that's all to come on the next video, so thanks for watching.